there were 800 scrolls discovered. And some of them, a handful of them, probably date back as far as 250 BC. And that particularly some of the biblical texts. Out of the 800, 200 were books of the Bible. And we'll talk about the significance Where we of that. start to get interested is, is right here. From 175 to 164 BC is the rule of Seleucid ruler Antiochus Epiphanes IV. So who are the Seleucids and why do we care about Antiochus Epiphanes IV? So let's have that discussion. Alexander the Great. How many people have heard of Alexander the Great? Good, most of you. <clears throat> Alexander the Great conquers the East in 320 BC. Does that sound right, Byron? With Don? Is that about right? Yeah. I could be off by a decade or so. He, he conquers the East, and it, which includes Egypt, uh, the Holy Lands, Israel, Syria, and, 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 and supposedly he gets as far as Afghanistan, if you can believe it. I mean, parts of India, the, uh, Afghanistan. But we're, we're interested on, on of the, the Holy Lands. Uh, he goes on a drinking binge and he dies suddenly. And he's only like 30 or 31 years old. 33. Well, 33. So he dies. And his kingdom that he has captured gets divided up among various generals and cronies of his. And the two most uh, important from our point of view for our discussion here are the Ptolemies, uh, which starts with a P, but you don't pronounce the P. It's P-T. Uh, is the, the Ptolemies and the Seleucids. So by when we, you know, fast forward the 150 years or whatever from the death of Alexander to when the scrolls start to be written. At that point, uh, the Holy Lands are ruled by the Syrians uh, who are descended from the Seleucids who were, who were cronies of Alexander the Great. So in this case, when we talk about the Syrians, we're not talking about the Assyrians, the ones that had the pointy hats that you, you hear about in the Old Testament. Uh, they were the ones that took over the northern kingdom uh, in uh, 700 BC or whatever. We're not talking about the conehead Assyrians. We're talking about the, uh, the Greek Syrians who were ruling Syria, obviously, but also at that point have control of uh, Israel, Palestine, whatever you want to call it. Now earlier, the Ptolemies who were ruling Egypt, but were not Egyptians, but were Greeks who were ruling Egypt. Earlier, the Ptolemies had had control of Israel, but over the years, it changed hands many times. So at this, during this period, the Seleucids, the Greek rulers of Syria, had control of Israel. And they had a, a ruler called Antiochus Epiphanes IV. Now, <clears throat> for years, probably decades, the Seleucids had ruled Israel and hadn't paid much attention to Israel. They kind of let them do their own thing, have their own religion, and you want to have the temple, great. But a funny thing happened uh, around this period with Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, this is right at the time where the balance of power in the Mediterranean is starting to shift. And we're kind of seeing the proto-Roman Empire. It's not the Roman Empire yet. This is before Julius Caesar and, and, and uh, all that. But the Romans are starting to become more powerful. And there was a series of battles between the Romans and the Seleucids. And the Romans won convincingly. <clears throat> and the Romans gave old uh, Antioch Epiphanes IV, they gave him a choice. Okay, you got two choices here, because we, we won. You did notice that we won, right? Okay, so here's your two choices. We kill you and loot your kingdom and kill all your family. So that's your first choice. But if you like that, we'll stop there. No? Okay. <laughs> the second one is you're going to pay us through the nose. You're going to pay us lots and lots of loot and stuff, and uh, here's my Christmas list I expect you to fill, and I mean the whole thing. So Antiochus Epiphanes IV chooses number two. Okay, so Antiochus Epiphanes comes up with all the loot he can find in Syria, and it's not enough. So he says, don't I control Israel too? Yes. Don't they have a temple there? Yes. Don't they have all kinds of gold and jewels stuff. and gold candelabras and stuff there? Yes. <laughs> well, this is how I'm going to pay the Romans off. 
So this is the beginning of this whole saga is Antiochus Epiphanes IV uh, becomes the guy who's going to destroy the temple, and he does, or he, at least he desecrates it, he doesn't destroy it. He's going to desecrate the temple, he's going to steal all the stuff from the temple, and this causes the beginning of a revolt, and one of the unforeseen circumstances or un unforeseen things that comes out of that revolt is this weird little group marches off into the desert and sets up their own little monastic environment, although that's an anachronism, I know, because that's a, a Roman Catholic word, word from the uh, Dark Ages. But they set up their own little monastic settlement. So, uh, the other thing about Antiochus Epiphanes IV, which was the second thing, is he may have been the abomination, that, the prototype for the abomination that causes desolation which is first mentioned in a prophetic sense in Daniel, but Christ himself mentions it in uh, all three of the Synoptic Gospels. He talks about, and in the end times, the abomination that causes desolation. It's mentioned in Daniel, and he actually identifies that, so you know what, what book of the, the, the Old Testament it comes from, that's mentioned in Daniel will appear again. So a lot of people think Antiochus Epiphanes IV may have been the prototype uh, that a Jew of that time, if they wanted to think of the most horrifying person they possibly could, he's the one that would come to mind. Now today, we might say, you know, Pol Pot or Stalin or Hitler or, you know, whatever. And, but back then, if you were a Jew, you might have said Antiochus Epiphanes IV. So continuing along, 173 B.C., the high priest in uh, Jerusalem, so this would have been the head... Uh, uh, well, I, I don't think they were called Sadducees at that, that point. This would, would have been the head Levitical uh, priest. It's deposed by Antiochus Epiphanes IV, and he's replaced by a guy named Jason. Why would Antiochus Epiphanes IV care who the high priest of the temple was? Because the new guy paid him. He paid him off. He said, here's some money. Make me high priest. And he did. So needless to say, uh, this is not viewed well by the elders in Jerusalem. Uh, between 170 and 168 B.C., Antiochus Epiphanes IV desecrates the temple of Jerusalem, he loots it, kills at least 40,000 Jews. First Holocaust. First Holocaust. <laughs> and he doesn't just steal stuff from the, the temple. He goes out of his way to desecrate it. And that's why the Jews hate him so much. I mean, you know... Robbing me is one thing, but desecrating my religion, that's, a, that's another thing. And that's where you cross the line. So the temple is, is uh, desecrated and robbed at this point. And uh, so that means an invading army. You know, army has invaded Israel. Um, but in one of the great uh, stories from the intertestamental period, but when I say intertestamental period, I'm talking about the end of the Old Testament, the beginning of the New Testament. 430 years roughly in there between them. So we're talking about stuff that happened in that period. So in 167, in the, the hills of Judea, a guerrilla fighter arises. And his name is Judas Maccabeus. And Judas Maccabeus has a father named Mathathias. It's not Matthias, it's Mathathias. I don't know why they put the extra syllable in there. His father is a, an elderly... Uh, uh, priest of the synagogue and uh, he encourages his boys and there's three of them who will eventually be the leaders of this revolt uh, to do this revolt and the first one is Judas Maccabeus now just to make it confusing Maccabeus is not his family it's Judas the hammer it's like worldwide wrestling, uh, wrestling or something. <laughs> so it's, it's a stone cold the Judas. <laughs> now, did they have a last name? Maybe, because the dynasty that grows out of that revolt is we refer to it as the Hasmonean dynasty. But if you try to track down, well, does that mean his father was was Mathathias Hasmonean? Well, no, not really. So.